What is going on guys? Pat, not in the shop, just at my computer right now. Uh, I thought I'd make a quick video uh, about an engine, a Vortec combo uh, that I installed in a Corvette a couple weeks ago. I posted a couple pictures on Instagram and guys have been asking me about this combination. I thought it would just be easier just to go through it in a video rather than trying to post everything on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow me Instagram, if you don't follow me, please uh, add me piss cutter performance and if you need to direct message me on there dm me no problem uh so let's go through this combination it's a real simple combination uh it's it's basically and just a, a stock 350 vortex but upgraded just a little bit so um first off on the dyno it was ran with a 600 holly carburetor but the final uh when i installed it in the car it had a uh, 600 horsepower of uh, Phytech um, fuel injection kit put on it. Uh, and, and on the dyno, I think it had different headers than the headers that were running in the car. It was like a mid-length in the car. I'm pretty sure it had long tubes on the dyno, but just small, like uh, inch and five-eighths long tube headers on the dyno. All right, so let's start off uh, with the block. The engine, the base of the engine is basically a Vortec block. It's an 880 Vortec blo uh, late model casting, one piece rear main seal. Um, it's got the stock crank, the stock rods, and the stock pistons. Uh, so with the head gaskets we're running and the Vortec heads, the combination here comes out to about 9.5 to 1 compression. What's really nice about this combination, it'll run on 87 oct octane, so you're getting a nice torquey motor that'll run on 87 octane gas. A little bit thinner head gasket, uh, GM part number 1409645. That's a 28 thou compressed uh, head gasket, and that brings the compression up to about 9.5 to 1, just a little bit from the, the stock 9.3, uh, 9.4 of the Vortex. The heads that went on this engine were not ported, they were just the stock casting, um, and believe it or not, this app application with the camera we're talking about, even this, the stock springs can be used, um, but I do always recommend a Beehive upgrade if you if it's in the budget. This is a budget build. If, you have, if it's a brand new set of heads and the springs aren't weak, you can reuse the stock springs, but you have to remember if you're taking this uh, like an old Vortec motor uh, and you're doing an upgrade to it, Oftentimes those springs are just weak and they should not be reused. The rocker arms uh, were just the stamp steel self-aligning rocker arms. The stock uh, Vortec rocker arms were within the limit of the cam for running those, so there's no issues. And the push rods are all, all stock. The cam. So here's the cam that everyone wants to know about. It's a Melling 22129. Uh, it's got 434 lift on the intake. 462 lift on the exhaust with the stock 1.5 rocker arm, 198, uh, 210 at 50 duration split, and 273, 288 duration advertised, 112 lobe separation angle. Uh, the timing chain was upgraded to a roller timing chain, and then a regular timing um, timing cover was put on rather than the Vortec plastic cover. The intake is a Performer RPM intake. Uh, I will add it's similar to a Performer RPM intake. I shouldn't say it is. It's uh, like a just a copy, like almost like a no name or like a Summit brand. I think this one is uh, um, wasn't a professional product, but it was something similar to that. It's basically a copy of a Performer RPM uh, Vortec intake. Uh, it's, this application it wasn't the best intake to put on a Corvette. There's lower rise intakes. Um, that you can use on like a C3 Corvette because you do have hood clearance issues. But this is what was ran on the engine when it was dyno, so I didn't want to tell you anything different. Uh, an op another option could be um, a Vortec air gap intake. You might see a little bit of a benefit with that, uh, but they're they're fairly similar uh, similar intakes, the RPM and the air gap. So um, part number for that would be like Edelbrock 7116 if you wanted to do a, a brand name Edelbrock intake. So this is a, a great combination for torque. Uh, it ended up making 414 foot-pounds of torque at 3,800 RPM and uh, holding a nice torque curve. Uh, not a high revving engine, but it made power, uh, peak power at uh, 
400 RPM, and that's 300 and run up to 317 horsepower. This is crank horsepower, not wheel horsepower. This is not an engine dyno. Uh, this this is a very mild cam. One really one step up, a little bit maybe more than one step up from uh, a stock cam. But this is something. I was even trying to get a video of the idle, but it honestly just sounded like a running engine, so uh, I don't really have a good video of the idle, but it's very mild, mild idle, no lumpiness, lots of vacuum for power brakes, you don't have to worry about that, drivability, great, uh, but just a nice torquey combination. So it's basically just taking uh, a, a Vortec, like, crate, like an L31 crate motor, adding your, your cam, uh, timing chain, uh, timing cover, vortex or vortex style uh, carbureted intake, and an HEI distributor. It was just ran with a regular um, HEI distributor, uh, and this is just a great torquey combination. Like I said, we end up putting fuel injection on it, uh, and the customer is super happy. Uh, it just he said it's just night and day difference, especially from what like a C3 Corvette would have came with. This was a 1980 Corvette, so they didn't have a lot of horsepower even then. Uh, so this is just a huge upgrade for him while he can still maintain uh, great drivability, decent fuel mileage.